I love you. Just as much. Oh, I love you more than that. Just the feet were singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, because that's her favorite song. <laughs> Sophia's face, and then I went and looked at Serena, but up on her leg here was a... Elaine Campione, born Frances Elaine, was your typical everyday girl from Coles Island, New Brunswick. She lived in her hometown until she turned 20, when she moved to Ontario for work-related reasons. While attending community college, she worked as a nanny in the city and held down several other jobs to support herself. By the year 2000, she met Leo Campione, a man she'd fallen head over heels in love with at the time and would eventually marry. After tying the knot, the couple lived together in Bradford, Ontario. Although the relationship between the couple started normal and loving, things began taking a turn for the worse with many who knew the couple personally describing their relationship as rocky. One of the many reasons they didn't get along well was that they appeared to have entirely different values and beliefs which made it difficult for the two to get along. Leo was known for having an extroverted personality. He was incredibly social. However, Elaine was an introvert and preferred staying to herself, which is why she had a relatively small circle. Many people who knew Elaine, including the neighbors who would see her often, noticed that she didn't smile much. She looked reasonably unhappy most of the time. Those close to Elaine say that she believed Leo was cheating on her, which could have been the reason for her lack of happiness and enthusiasm. Sadly, Elaine's suspicions got worse over the years. She believed that he was having an affair and would try to follow him around without him noticing to see if he was meeting up with other women. Of course, this can cause the downfall of any relationship. However, Elaine wasn't ready to let Leo go. After all, she would truly admired and wanted to be with him. So to make things work, the couple would go on to have a baby. Their first daughter, Serena, on August 8, 2003. The couple would then have another daughter, Sophia, a year later. Now, most know that a baby doesn't solve relationship problems. In fact, it can exacerbate those problems by adding more stress. After giving birth to her children, Elaine's mental health was declining, which concerned Leo. He was so concerned that he believed she couldn't adequately care for their daughters, resulting in her spending some time in psychiatric care units. Keep in mind that Elaine already struggled with paranoia before having children, but mental health issues coupled with possible postpartum depression completely changed her. Although she'd spent some time in psychiatric wards, it seemed that nothing was genuinely helping Elaine. She'd tried to end her life more than once, which caused a lot of concern for Leo and her loved ones. In addition to making these attempts, Elaine became somewhat delusional, believing that random people were following her and planning to attack her. It seemed her initial paranoia had escalated to an entirely new level, to the point that she was in some sort of psychosis. At some point, Elaine started to believe that someone wanted to take her children from her. She became exceptionally paranoid and concerned about possibly losing her two daughters. She began claiming to see aliens and other extraterrestrials attempting to take her children from her. In 2005, Leo was arrested for domestic violence, with Elaine making claims of abuse against him. She said he was beating her being violent with their eldest child and making threats to take her children from her. Naturally, this would cause the couple to get a divorce, followed by Leo moving out of the home and somewhere else. During this time, 
Leo also claimed that the allegations against him were false. He says he'd never get physically violent with Elaine and the children. Throughout the divorce proceedings, Leo and Elaine were involved in a heated custody battle, both claiming the other was unfit to care for the children. Elaine started journaling her thoughts and feelings, hoping that her daughters would eventually read these entries when they were older. In one entry, she said, Daddy hit me and hurt me, but he gave me so much love that mommy couldn't handle it. By the fall of 2005, Elaine moved to the Coulter Glen Apartments in North Herberia. There, she lived on the fourth floor with her two girls. In the meantime, Leo lived in Woodbridge with his parents, which wasn't far from the Coulter Glen Apartments. Despite some saying the children appeared happy, Leo had major concerns over the well-being of his daughters. He felt she wasn't providing safe and comfortable living conditions for the girls. In fact, he'd even gone as far as to ask for more access to the children to protect them from what he felt was yet another mental health breakdown. Leo was fighting for access to his children but couldn't legally live with them due to the allegations of abuse made against him. He couldn't see the girls for nearly a year, making the fight for them even harder on his behalf. By the time Elaine allowed Leo to see the girls, he could only do so twice a month, and each visit with the girls had to be supervised because Elaine was afraid he would abuse them if no one were watching. On one visit with the children, Leo takes a few pictures of himself with the girls. He was excited to spend time with them and wanted to take pictures to have some memories. However, this enraged Elaine so much that she complained to social workers about it. During this time, Elaine's mother becomes concerned about her mental health and wants to help, so she moves into the apartment for roughly three months. She wanted to be there to provide some support to her daughter while ensuring that her grandchildren were safe, comfortable, and genuinely happy. Elaine's mother witnessed her erratic behavior, with Elaine claiming that Leo's family was tied in with the Mafia and could have people go after her at any given moment. She even began to believe that her lawyer was actually working against her. The suspicions of her lawyer being on Leo's side became so problematic that Elaine drove over to the lawyer's home to see if she could spot anything out of the ordinary. Of course, this concerned her mother even more. It appears that Elaine started spiraling worse than ever before at this point. She began to exhibit inconsistent behavior, and while Elaine's mother was there, she even noticed that Elaine was somewhat disengaged regarding the children. During one visit to a psychiatric ward, the children received placement with Elaine's mother, which made Elaine paranoid about her own mother, believing that she was trying to take the girls from her. Shortly after this period in Elaine's life, Leo's father became exceptionally worried about the girls, stating that they looked malnourished and didn't appear to be receiving the care they needed and deserved. At this time, Elaine mentioned wanting to die and would end up back in the psychiatric hospital, where she would stay for seven days. The Children's Aid Society began looking after the two girls for those seven days, but Elaine regained custody when she left the hospital. By the summer of 2006, Elaine arrives at Leo's parents' house and tells them she's unable to deal with the girls. She admits herself into the hospital once again, allowing Leo's parents to watch the girls for her while she's gone. Once she's discharged, she gets the girls and returns them home like nothing happened. It appears this has become a vicious cycle. Elaine would take the children, have a mental health breakdown, check into a psychiatric hospital, and then get discharged a few days later before grabbing her children and bringing them back home. Leo asked Elaine to allow his parents to care for the children, giving her a break and plenty of time to get her mental health in order. However, Elaine refused to allow his parents to continue caring for the children. At this point, Elaine was still writing in her journal, documenting the times she attempted to take her life and how long she had to stay in the hospital before she was discharged and could get back home. 
it would make some wonder why a mother would ever write such things down in a journal that she wanted her children to read when they got older. By the end of September, social workers noticed that all seemed well between Leo and his daughters during a visitation with the children. They noted that the interactions between Leo and the girls were nothing short of normal and that the little ones seemed to adore him as much as he adored them. It looked as though things were starting to look up for Leo, who was seeking full custody of the girls. Elaine's lawyer informed her of the possibility that Leo would gain custody over the girls, which naturally devastated her, causing her to believe that her worst nightmare would come true, that she would have her daughters taken away from her. On October 2, 2006, Elaine filled a bathtub with water. Shortly after, the girls would no longer be alive. Moments later, Elaine filmed herself for the camera, where she talked about her children in the past tense while crying. In the video, she says, Look at them videotapes. Look at how happy they were. Elaine claims that she and the girls were so happy without Leo, but he wouldn't let them go or allow them to live without him. It's believed that she drowned her girls in the bathtub to end their lives and keep Leo from gaining custody of them. Recording this because Leo and I are happy. Everything is gone, gone. You wouldn't give peace. You wouldn't tell the truth. I begged. You even let Stacy not believe in me till later I had to sign papers when I didn't. I went to victim witness to get the truth. Trying, begging everyone the truth. How you beat me for three years, behind closed doors, beat me when I was pregnant with Serena and Sophia. You didn't care about our babies, you didn't care about me, you didn't care about yourself. All you did was hurt us. I'm scared of you, I'm scared of everything, of your family. Everything you've told me over the years is the truth. I'm just going to God, because God is the only one who cares and can protect me. Because you are the devil, Leo. You are the psychotic devil. Nothing's good enough for you. It has to always be your way. Well, they're good. And you can have it your way. Your wife and your daughters are dead now. We're all in heaven. And you just couldn't let me have it. You just couldn't let me have my happiness in life. I hate you. I truly, truly hate you. You can take your engagement ring and you can shove it where the sun don't shine because it's cursed. I truly believe it is a cursed ring. If you wanted to win, you won. Are you happy? How does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? Because it doesn't make me feel great. I've lost everything my whole life. And I will never know what I would have become, what my children would have become. I had so many goals and ambitions that you wouldn't let up. I just wish you had left us completely and told other places. When the girls were no longer alive, Elaine removed them from the tub, dressed them in their favorite pajamas, and put jewelry on them before placing them on the bed and trying to take her own life. At 6.15 a.m. on October 4, 2006, Elaine contacted the local authorities and claimed her children were deceased. When asked why or how the deaths happened, she says she doesn't know what happened. Many believe she only called authorities at this point because her attempts to take her own life were unsuccessful. The officers arrive reasonably quickly and ask her if she has children, to which she replies, Yes, they're dead. The officers enter the home and notice the girls are lifeless. Law enforcement in Ontario charged Elaine with two counts of first-degree murder. 
Our communication center received a call that there was two dead children inside of an apartment. Neighbors identified the little girls as Serena and Sophia, and their mother was the one who called police to their fourth floor apartment. Now you understand that you've been charged with two counts of first degree murder? Yes, I okay. understand what you're saying. And the charges are for murder in regards to both of your children. Okay. Only you know what was going on when this they happened. They were my babies. They're your babies, I know. Serena was playing in the, in the living room, coloring, doing sign language. Mm -hmm. Sophia was having a bath. Everything was fine. They go to bed between 7 and 8 o'clock at night, every night. And the next thing I know is I've got people on my house. Mm -hmm. A guy with a blue outfit with orange on it in my bedroom. Do you remember making the call? There was a phone call you made this morning. This is the thing. There's a blockage I don't remember. I understand here that you've gone through a lot in your life here, and uh, it, it doesn't sound, it sounds like to me your whole world came crashing down. And it doesn't sound like you've got a lot of support. And you know what, I, truly, I, I don't understand how anyone in your situation could be able to do that on your own. I, I really don't. Only you know what was going on inside yourself. And when this they happened, were my babies. they're your babies, I know. Serena was playing in the in the living room, coloring, sign, mm -hmm. doing sign language. Mm -hmm. Sophia was having a bath. We were videotaping. Mm -hmm. Everything was fine. Listening to music, same as we always do. Mm -hmm. it's, nothing's different. They go to bed between seven and eight o'clock at night every night. Mm -hmm. I kept them in a routine to keep them stable mm -hmm. because of the chaoticness of having to have a babysitter in a day or a babysitter at night because he's dragging me into court for this and that. Meanwhile, my daughters are bawling their eyes out because they don't want me to be away from them. I know you love them. I, I can tell that. I can see that in your eyes. Where do you think your children are now? I assume my husband has them. You understand you've been charged with murder. You understand that both the children, Sophia and Serena, are both deceased. And where did the kids sleep last night? They slept in my bed. Mm -hmm. so tell me about that, what happened there is... I came to bed around 9, 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. went to curl up with Sophia, I brought, I was going to bring in a bottle for her because it's usually her feeding time and she was cold. Mm -hmm. And the fan, I leave a fan running. So I pulled up the covers from both of them mm -hmm. and I cu cuddled up both of them and usually they turn and cuddle in with me. They weren't cuddling in with me mm -hmm. and Sophia had weird colored lips mm -hmm. and that's when I thought there was something wrong and I looked at Sophia Serena and she was looking weird too. Mm -hmm. What happened then? And I assume that's when I called. I didn't know after the, that's all I can remember is going to cuddle in with them to get ready to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And they weren't moving, they were just laying there. And usually they turn to me, and Sophia usually wraps her arm around this arm, and Serena reaches over both of us mm -hmm. to cuddle in with both of us. This part is all blurry, I don't know. All I remember is trying to figure out why they weren't calling. I was shaking them and mm -hmm. asking them to wake up, and usually they'll wake up. Elaine retained Mary Kremer as her lawyer and went to trial over the deaths of her two daughters, Serena and Sophia. The trial would go on for approximately seven weeks, with Mary Kremer stating that her client, Elaine, wasn't guilty due to insanity. 
In Elaine's defense, Mary Kramer never tried to make claims that Elaine didn't harm her kids. The jury convicted Elaine of first-degree murder on November 15, 2010. The jury believed that she knew murdering her daughters was wrong and shouldn't be done. Yet she still did it despite having signs of severe mental health issues. As a result of her conviction, Elaine was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum tariff of 25 years. She has since filed several appeals, with most denied. So, what are your thoughts on this horrific case? Do you believe Elaine Campione was in her right mind when she took the lives of her two daughters? Or do you think she was in a serious state of psychosis and should spend time in a psychiatric ward rather than prison? No matter what, one thing is certain. Two precious children had their lives cut unreasonably short.